She had been looking forward to this night for some time. She was turning 21 after all. To celebrate, her and a few friends were going on a midnight booze cruise out of Memphis. She drank and danced the night away, but when the boat returned, no one knew where the birthday girl had gone. Welcome, or welcome back. I'm Cassie, and this is A Wicked World. The story that I have for you today is a very recent one. It actually just happened a little over a week ago. Tamia Taylor went missing on a riverboat booze cruise, and it's being compared to the Shanquella Robinson case that I just recently covered. Tamia was with people who she considered to be friends, just like Shanquella did. And these friends' stories are also changing and not making sense, just like in Shanquella's case. Let me know at the end what you think might have happened to Tamia. This is the story of Tamia Taylor's disappearance. <laughs> Tamia Taylor is a young, beautiful, kind, and positive young woman. She also is a mother of two. She has one little boy and one little girl. Tamia is from Hernando, Mississippi, and she just recently had turned 21. So in order to celebrate this monumental birthday, she was going to attend a midnight booze cruise on the Memphis River boats out of Memphis, Tennessee. It was only about a 25-minute drive away from her house in Hernando. So on September 9th, Tamia drove to meet up with her three friends and have a great time partying. The three people who went on the booze cruise with Tamia that night are named... Quandara Jenkins, Kanisha Poole, and Shanquilla Drake. These three people, who were said to be Tamia's friends, were also her co-workers, and they were all from Jackson, Tennessee. Now, these three friends may not have actually been Tamia's friends, as she thought. Her mother said that Tamia always liked to see the best in people, so she may have been hanging out with some less-than-savory people. Neighbors said that on the night of September 9th, Prior to Tamia going on the booze cruise, there was a party at her house for her birthday. Neighbors said things had gotten a little bit rowdy at the party. On the night of September 9th, the group boarded the Island Queen River boat around 10.30 p.m. Everyone, including Tamia, had a great time dancing and drinking on the two-hour cruise. She is videotaped here, dancing. But when the cruise was coming to an end, and it was pulling back into the dock, which was around 1.30 in the morning... Tamia was nowhere to be seen. Tamia's cousin was supposed to meet up with her so that the two could continue partying to celebrate Tamia's birthday. But when the cousin showed up near the riverboats where they had planned to meet, Tamia never showed up. So the cousin called Tamia's mother at that point to let her know that Tamia was missing. So Tamia's mother's name is Deborah Taylor. And after sending Tamia numerous text messages and calling her many times with no answer, Tamia's mother got worried and called the friends who she had gone on the cruise with to see what they knew. The friends told her that Tamia had actually never made it onto the boat and they hadn't seen or heard from her. Immediately though, Tamia's mother knew there was something off about this because the night before, Tamia had texted her mother at 9.30 p.m. to let her know that she had made it to Memphis. Then at 11.30 p.m., Tamia texted her mother again to let her know that she had made it onto the boat. So why were they lying about this? What were they trying to hide? Extremely worried, Deborah called the Memphis Police Department to file a missing person report. The search started for Tamia Taylor. Police sent out boats to search on the Mississippi River where the river boats were, as well as helicopters in the air to search for Tamia. The police asked the Memphis Riverboat Company for video footage. They, however, said that there was no cameras on the boats, so they had nothing they could give them. But they did discover that they had some video footage from a camera that was on shore that had videotaped the boat coming back into the dock. And on that videotape, they saw that Tamia was on the boat as it was pulling back in. So she was there the entire cruise all the way up until the time the boat went back to dock. And then something happened to her from there. So after it was confirmed with undeniable evidence, 
that Tamiya was indeed on board the boat, her co-workers started changing the story. Tamiya's co-worker, Quandera, said that Tamiya had driven from Brownsville to Jackson earlier the morning of the 9th to go shopping. At 7.30 that evening, the group all got ready together and drove down to the riverboats. They arrived there at 9 p.m. Now, Quandera says that Tamiya was already drinking little nip bottles of alcohol and that they were all smoking marijuana before they arrived at the boat. When they got there, they parked on Beale Street and walked the strip down towards the dock. Around 10.15 p.m., they met up with two more friends, and they all got in line together to board the riverboats. Quandera also now said that Tamiya had met a man in line while waiting to board the riverboats. He said they started joking around with each other, and the man said, Oh, you're a Virgo? She's a Virgo. They started talking and laughing, and then... He claims that this man gave Tamiya some money so that she could buy herself a drink to celebrate her birthday. So I'm going to let you listen to the recording of the statement that Quandera came out with a few days after Tamiya went missing because everybody started to blame them for something happening to her. It's a lot of rumors going around. It's a lot of people saying that me and two of my friends have drugged her. We killed her. It's too many rumors going around. 7.30, that's when we all got dressed and was heading our way to Memphis. Tamir was already drinking. She had her little bottle with her, and she was already taking shots. And we were smoking. Them two were talking or whatever, and he was saying, oh, so you were Virgo, she's a Virgo, so they started laughing and talking. So he gave her some money to buy her a drink so she could celebrate her birthday. I walked down there to the first floor, and I was talking to Kanisha and Sequina, and I asked them, where's Tamir? They looked and said that she was just right here. So as soon as they said then, we all split up and searched the whole boat while the boat was moving, looking for Tamiya. I prayed that she didn't fall off that boat. I did somebody snatched her, or I did somebody, some people on that boat got something to do with it. Quandera went on to say that at the end of the cruise, Tamiya left her phone on the table and went up to use the bathroom on the second floor. Though it's been said that there is no bathroom on the second floor, there's only one on the first floor of those riverboats. He said that him and the other two friends grabbed Tamiya's phone off of the table and then went to go wait for her outside of the bathroom. After 15 minutes, she didn't emerge, so they decided to just take her phone and get off the boat and take off without her. Tamiya's mother asked, Why would you leave? That makes no sense. Y'all came together. Y'all stick together. I also don't understand why Tamiya would have left her phone. I know that you do things that you normally wouldn't when you're intoxicated, but your phone? You usually bring that everywhere with you, especially since she didn't return afterwards. She wouldn't have just left her phone. The friends were also now saying that when Tamiya didn't emerge from the bathroom, they went and searched the ship for her and asked people if they had seen her. When nothing came of this search, they said that at that time, they called Tamiya's mother as well as the police. Though Tamiya's mother never said anything about them calling her, she said that she called them the following morning and that Tamiya's cousin was the one who had contacted her to let her know that Tamiya was missing. So there's another inconsistency. It was theorized that maybe Tamiya had fallen overboard as there were a few people who said they had heard a few loud splashes during the cruise. But she was seen on the camera as the boat came back into dock, so that wouldn't have been a very long time frame for her to have fallen in, if that had happened. The Coast Guard has also now gotten involved and has been searching the area. So with such a small area for them to search, if it's been over a week and nothing's been found... I want to go ahead and say that that's probably not what happened. It doesn't sound like she went overboard. Tamiya's family grouped together and they all went to search for Tamiya themselves. They went down to the docks near the Memphis River boats and looked all along the riverbanks. They even joined one of the cruises on the boat that Tamiya had been on to see if they could find any clues as to where she had gone. And Memphis River boats didn't seem to be much of a help to her family. They even charged them $40 a person to get on the boat to search for clues as to where their lost family member was. On social media, they said that they were going to be refunding the family, but I don't know if that actually happened or not. 
I would hope so. Sadly, Tamiya's mother also said that she had a bad feeling about Tamiya going on the cruise that night, and she really wished that she had not gone. There has been some footage put up on social media of everybody dancing on top of the boat. From what we know, Tamiya is not in the crowd, but there were a few people who did say they saw her throughout the night. The first person to say they had seen Tamiya that night was a man by the name of Jay Munn. Jay is a golf cart taxi driver who goes back and forth picking up passengers from the riverboats and bringing them back to their cars or anywhere else they want to go. He said that he saw Tamiya early in the morning of September 10th, right after she had gotten off the boat. He said Tamiya seemed very intoxicated and she was with two girls and one guy. I'm guessing her co-workers. You know, the ones that said that she had never gotten on the boat, and then she had never gotten off the boat, but now this guy's saying that he saw her off the boat. Hmm. Hmm. He said he offered the group a ride, but they said they were all set and continued on. The golf cart driver also said that at that time, the group seemed happy, and there did not look like there was anything wrong. Another witness came forward and said that while she was on the boat, Tamiya had actually said happy birthday to her, as she was celebrating her birthday as well. And Tamiya also told her how pretty she was. She then says that she saw Tamiya getting off the boat alone. She believes that maybe someone took her from there as she was so intoxicated. Yet another person who was on the booze cruise that night said that she saw a man helping Tamiya up the hill leading away from the boats and docks. She said that she saw this man refuse the ride from the golf cart driver, and instead, she saw him put Tamiya in a truck that had some other dudes in it. And these three supposed friends also deleted their social media a few days after Tamiya went missing. So with three witnesses now saying that they saw Tamiya get off that boat and they saw her with other people, there should be some further investigation going into these friends. I really hope there is, because last I heard, they were mostly searching the water in the area near the boats. But there's been so many people who saw her get off the boat, they really need to be extending their search at this point. Not to mention, these three friends have changed their stories how many times now? There's definitely something off, and they absolutely have more information about what happened to Tamiya that night. This video was recently posted, And it shows that Tamiya was 100% on the boat. So we have another witness who saw her. Tamiya Taylor is 5'7", and she was last seen wearing a beige shirt, white shorts, a black jacket, and white shoes. If anyone has information about her, they should contact the Memphis Police Department's Missing Persons Department at 901-636-4479 or Crime Stoppers at 901 528-2274. Tamiya's mother is asking anyone who was on the booze cruise that night or in the area that might have seen Tamiya to come forward, even if it's just a small amount of information. You never know what could help. Because these friends that were with her don't seem to be cooperating. And they seem to be telling all different kinds of stories. Tamiya's mother is frustrated, and she knows as well that they know something else that they're not telling her. So, thank you for listening to all of Tamiya's story today. It's been a little over a week, and Tamiya's friends have yet to be looked into. So even if the friends didn't do something to Tamiya that night, they know who did or what happened. They absolutely have to know. So what did Tamiya's friends actually do to her? Or if they didn't do something to her, why are they lying about it? If I hear any new information, I will let you guys know. But hopefully Tamiya's found before any more information does have to come out. Hopefully that's the new information, is that to me has been found. So, if you do like true crime, and you want to hear it from me, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button below, and turn on those notifications too. It'll let you know whenever I upload a new video, which is two to three times every week. Thanks for watching A Wicked World. Until next time, take care guys. Bye. Thank you for being patrons of A Wicked World. Adina? 
Angela, Angie, Catherine, Lindsay, and Mel. Your support is greatly appreciated. Now, there's even more of a Wicked World on Patreon. You'll have access to exclusive videos each month and more. Any support truly helps to make sure the victims never get forgotten and to highlight the shortcomings of society associated with each case. So check it out at patreon.com slash a wicked world or use the Patreon app.